How's it going people? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking you through five of the cheapest cars that you can buy to get yourself into Rallycross. Now, Rallycross is a sport that actually originated here in the UK. I actually had the amazing opportunity to see one of the most famous old Rallycross cars, this old Porsche 911, at Chateau Impney last year. And I've been a big fan of the sport from a sort of professional point of view for quite some time. But the best thing about it is that it gives people quite a good and cheap opportunity to get into motorsports. Now, I have to caveat that with the fact that motorsports simply aren't cheap. Even though the cars in this video are generally quite cheap there are a bunch of additional costs that make it quite a lot more expensive but relative to other motorsports the classes and the cars that I'm going to show you are super cheap to get involved in and they give you a great opportunity to kind of go somewhere with your racing in the future. Topic of the week this week if you could have been a racer in any racing series in the entire world what would you have done? I've always wanted to be a Formula 1 driver. I know I'm a bit late to the game now, but that was always my goal when I was a kid. Let me know what yours in the comments down below. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that great stuff. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So when coming into Rallycross as a beginner on a budget, the main class you'll be looking at is the production class. If you've had a bit more motorsports experience, you could go for the super modified class, which the Top Gear boys entered in an episode a few years ago, but in this video I'm going to mainly focus on the production class as it's the route that most beginners would be likely to take. So before we begin properly, let's have a look at what's required to turn your cheap hatchback into a Rallycross car, and to prepare you for competing in the production class as well as how much it all costs. As I mentioned in the intro, it's definitely not the case that the car being cheap will make the whole Rallycross experience cheap, as motorsports are generally expensive. The types of engines are laid out in these rules on screen right now, but for your reference the main class that people like to drive in is the 1600cc 16 valve class. So let's say you've watched the end of this video and you've bought your car. In order for it to fit the safety requirements for the sport you will need it to comply with the current MSA yearbook regulations, as well as a bunch of other series specific regulations which means a roll cage, competition seat and mountings, harness seat belts and you need to be able to vacate the car within five seconds from a race ready position, fire extinguisher, towing eyes, electric cutoff switch, mud flaps, all side and rear glass has to be replaced with perspex and two high level brake lights inside the rear window. And from what I can see at a glance this will basically cost you around about £2,000 give or take, not including shipping fees. That cost has to be added on immediately to whatever money you spend on your rallycross car. Quite a bit of cash but relative to many motorsports that's pretty cheap in terms of machinery. However even though at this point your car is eligible to take part in a rallycross race you're unlikely to do very well as despite modifications being heavily restricted in the production class there are some mods that you are able to do and should do if you want your car to be competitive such as uprated shocks and springs and the sky's the limit in terms of how much you want to spend on these poly bushes which could cost up to sort of 300 pounds depending on how many you go for anti-roll bar kits strut braces and numerous braking modifications to aid cooling and stopping power you can of course make your life a little easier with some free mods like removing any excess weight that you're allowed to remove and by being a naturally excellent driver, obviously. There are so many rules around building a car to this class, but I'll put a link in the description for you guys to check out if you want to see the rest of them. But that's not all, there are a ton of other costs you need to factor in before you can actually get this car out on track. I've heard on forums that the average year in Rallycross will cost you anywhere around the £5,000 mark in terms of maintenance, repairs, entry fees and memberships, licenses, fuel, fuel to get you to and from the events and all that great stuff. On top of this, you need to factor in getting stuff like a trailer and potentially a van to get you and your spares to and from an event. And let's not forget that you personally need to be wearing the correct safety equipment, which is a hefty expense in and of itself when you have to own a hands device to hold your head in place, a helmet, fireproof race suit, gloves, boots and a balaclava, as well as fireproof underwear as a recommendation. And all that is likely to set you back around £500 even if you're skimping out, but at least it's a one-off cost until all your equipment goes out of date and you have to repurchase it all. What this basically tells you is that motorsports really aren't objectively cheap in any way, but at least relative to other motorsports sports, production class rallycross is a cheap route into the sport. Anyway, let's have a quick look at those 5 cars you could consider to race in this class. Taking 5th we have the 2006-2010 Suzuki Swift Sport, which hosts a 1.6 litre inline 4 engine putting out 123 brake horsepower, taking it from 0 to 60 in around 8.6 seconds. Not only can this car take part in the production class, it has the benefit of enabling access to the Suzuki Swift Rallycross Championship, which is a one make series in the UK that provides some properly fun rallycross action on a budget. Another benefit of this car for someone not looking to spend a lot of cash is it already comes with a pretty stiff suspension setup and disc brakes on all four wheels. 
which some cars you could go for don't have. On top of this, you get a large amount of rallycross aftermarket support for the car, as well as many knowledgeable people, as it's apparently UK's largest rallycross class. Important to note that there are junior classes that also use the Swift, so these help to buff up the general usage of these cars in the sport. You can pick up a Swift for around the £1,500 mark, which is not a bad starting point for a rallycross car, especially when you consider it opens doors to championships beyond the production class. Anyway, a great car to enter into rallycross with multiple avenues and therefore well worth its place on this list. Worthy of note for a similar reason to the Swift is the R50 Mini Cooper, which you can pick up for just £600 for a running example, and it still lets you take part in more than one rallycross series. While it will sneak into the production class, it will also get you into the BRX BMW Mini Championship, which looks like excellent fun. It comes with a 1.6 litre inline 4 engine putting out 115 brake horsepower and taking it from 0 to 60 in 8.9 seconds. Slightly slower than the Swift, but for less than half the price you're still doing pretty well. A key benefit of choosing the Mini is the fact that you get to drive it at the same events as the Toyo Tires Motorsport UK British Rallycross Championship, as the One Make series runs alongside it as a kind of support race, which is pretty cool. You get to see some of the pros thrashing around before you head out onto the track, which means you'll always be seeing the path to the top. On top of that, the Mini is a very popular car in the UK, so in terms of maintenance and repairs on just all the standard parts, scrapyards will be your best friend. Just like the Swift, a great entry to the sport, but also a great way to see where you want to go in the future if you're quick enough, and therefore well worth fourth place on this list. Taking third, we have probably the most popular rallycross car in the production class, the Citroen Saxo VTS. It makes up 11 of the 27 cars in the 1600cc 16-valve production class for the BTRDA Championship, and the leader of the championship drives it. This pocket rocket come boy racer hatchback has the 1.6-litre 16-valve inline-4 engine, putting out 118 brake horsepower and managing 0-60 to in a very decent 7.8 seconds, which helps you to understand why it's so popular. Another reason why it's so popular is the fact that there is an absolute wealth of parts and knowledge about the car when you want to prepare it for rallycross, so you'll likely be able to put the car together for somewhat less than the other cars on this list. That said, the initial outlay is higher as this car seems to be getting ever more collectible or used in rallycross, as the cheapest running ones I could find were around the £1,800 mark. However, you can find ones in disrepair for less than a grand such as this one, or you can literally just buy a pre-built rallycross car when they come available at the end of each season and be on your way, such as this one I found on eBay bidding at £2,300. The car is popular for a reason though. Many owners mention its point and squirt style handling as being a major positive when out on the track. In addition to this, the Saxo actually took part in the Super 1600 class in the World Rally Championship with the winningest WRC driver in history, Sebastian Loeb, in the driver's seat, so it's definitely not a car to sniff at and if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for anybody. In second, we have practically the same car as the one I just showed you in many ways, the Peugeot 106 GTI. It shares its chassis with the Saxo as well as the 1.6 litre 16 valve inline 4 engine, putting out 118 brake horsepower and taking it from 0 to 60 in a slightly slower 8.4 seconds. The benefit of going for the 106 GTI is the fact that so many of the parts are shared with the Saxo, so you won't need to worry too much about getting rallycross parts to fit your car as there are plenty out there. In fact, many of the parts I used to benchmark the safety cost for this video are 106 GTI. GTI parts that were interchangeable with the Saxo. The only reason why I put it ahead of the Saxo in this list is my own personal bias, as I absolutely adore the 106 Maxi rally car. In my opinion, it's one of the best looking junior rally cars ever made. Similar to the Saxo, the cheapest I could find was around the £1,800 mark, which is likely a result of this car being so popular in cheap rallycross and rallying more broadly. But there's not much more that differentiates this car from the Saxo. My dad actually had one for a while, not the GTI, but a slightly more sluggish model, and I originally learn to drive in that car so I can attest to it being a nippy little car with very decent handling for the money. Taking the top spot on this list is another Citroen, the C2 VTS, which is also hugely popular in rallycross. Nine of the 27 drivers signed up to the 1600cc 16-valve production class for the BTRDA Rallycross Championship chose it, and the driver in second place in the championship drives it this time. In rallycross, it's basically seen as a modern Saxo in that prices for it are still cheap, but the car is very much ready to be turned into a rallycross legend. You can find these as cheap as £400 for one in a bit of disrepair, and a running one will set you back around £800 to 
to a ground, which is so decent for your base rallycross car. It hosts a 1.6 litre 16 valve inline 4 engine, pushing out 123 brake horsepower, taking it from 0 to 60 in 8 seconds, making it the second quickest stock car on this list, but far cheaper to buy still than the quicker Saxo. The car is popular in rallying as well as rallycross, which means again there is really good aftermarket support for it, which is exactly what you want when you're a beginner coming into the sport. Like the Saxo, the car was also used in the Super 1600 class in the World Rally Championship, and Sebastian Loeb has rallied the car too since retiring. In fact, there's actually a Sebastian Loeb version of the car available for the streets if you're interested. Of the five cars on this list, for a beginner, this is the one I would have to recommend, and that's why it takes the top spot on this list. So in this video I'm running through the fundamentals of getting into rallycross and giving you five great starter cars for beginners. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and let me know if I got anything wrong. I had to do a bunch of research to do this video so a lot of it was from research rather than just from general knowledge. A massive thank you to my patrons who should be on screen right now. I really hope you enjoyed this style of video and if you did let me know in the comments down below as I really want to do more motorsport style videos because I find it really interesting. But anyway remember to like and subscribe but as always thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Listen.